Well, good evening. Amen. And, uh, Amen. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to everyone. We're, we're glad to have you, boy. So beautiful here tonight. We, we got here. The snow's coming down. And uh, for those of you uh, who chose to, to join us tonight uh, via the Internet, you've made a great, uh, great decision. And we want you to stay safe. And, uh, but you are missing uh, something that's just very beautiful. Uh, when I was a little boy, I was telling some folks earlier, when I was a little boy, I always used to, that was my greatest wish for, for it always to snow on Christmas Eve. And um, tonight we got our wish. We got our, my grandson here. He, our grandson's with us tonight, Trace. And come here, Trace. Come here, buddy. We talk about it. And he was he was telling his mom on the way down that he wanted uh, he wanted it to snow and, and so he got his wish. You got your wish, didn't you, buddy? You ready for Santa Claus? You want? All right. You got your Batman with you? Okay. Just checking. Watch out! Don't there. Got the new rain. Yay! No. <laughs> I want to open up and uh, just have a word of prayer and uh, just invite the Lord to, to come and, and bless us tonight and as we celebrate the birth of His Son, Jesus. Let's pray together. Father, we do thank You for the opportunity to come and to gather as Your children and uh, to be able to worship You in spirit and in truth tonight. And God, we pray for all of those who are watching via the Internet and I just pray Your blessings over them as well. That, uh, God, this coming year, that, that would be uh, just quite different from what we've experienced this past year. And that you would continue to bless us as a nation, continue to bless us as a people, uh, continue to bless us as your children. I always tell God, uh, tell people that we are blessed and we are highly favored. And that's the way I see us, God. Uh, you have chosen us and you have sent the very best they had. You bankrupt heaven to send him to show us what you are like. And tonight we celebrate his birth. And so it's in his name, the most powerful name, the name of Jesus, that we ask your blessings. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Pay no attention to the man behind the screen. <laughs> Let's praise the Lord. Sundays uh, at Jesus and Jeans, we, uh, we've been in our Advent series, and we've been uh, teaching a little different this year. This year, uh, usually we, we start, there, there's four elements to Advent, uh, it's uh, peace, hope, uh, love, and, and joy. And so uh, this year, I, I kind of rearranged them. The first week, we, we, we've been talking about the gifts that Jesus came to give us. And the first week, we looked at the gift of hope. The second week, in week two, we looked at the gift of joy. This past Sunday, we looked at the, at the, at the gift of peace. 
And tonight, as we celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ, I want to share with you what I believe is His greatest gift. And that is the gift of love. Augustine once said, he said, God loves each of us as if there were only one of us. It's pretty powerful, isn't it? Rick Warren, pastor at Saddleback Church, he said, God is love. He didn't need us, but he wanted us. And that is the most amazing thing. Henry Drummond said, God is love. Therefore, love, without distinction, without calculation, without procrastination, love. Christian author Jerry Bridges writes, God's unfolding love for us is an objective fact affirmed over and over in the scriptures. It is true whether we believe it or not. And our doubts do not destroy God's love for us, nor does our faith create it. Now I want you to get that. Our doubts do not destroy God's love for us, nor does our faith create His love for us. It originates, Bridges says, in the very nature of God who is love, and it flows to us through our union with His beloved Son. You see, Jesus coming as a child, the Immaculate Conception. Now, that was certainly unusual. In, in fact, it was the first time it had ever happened. The only time that it's ever happened in the history of mankind. And so it was certainly unusual being born in a manger. His earthly father, a, a carpenter. His mother, a young virgin, chosen by God himself. This was and is a perfect picture of God's love for us. I've often wondered what it must have been like for Joseph. I wonder many times what he thought. I wonder how he must have felt when he, when he got the news that Mary was pregnant. And not only pregnant, but he was, she was pregnant with the Messiah, Yeshua, the Savior. The Savior? Really? Come on now, Mary. I mean, you, you actually want me to believe that. Knowing that he, even though, even though he was not the child's biological father, yet he would bear the responsibility of raising this child. And I, I think at some point, I, 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 I think that he must have thought, you know, God, you know, this this really what you want me to do, Lord? I mean, I'm, I'm just I'm just Joseph, you know. I'm just a carpenter. I'm just I'm just a typical guy, and and you've given me the the savior of the world, mankind, to raise and and to look after. And I just think that at some point he must have said, Lord, it's. Now, I'm not one to question you, but it really is a, a strange way to, to save the world. I'm sure it must have been surprised. 
where this road had taken him. Cause never in a million life would he have dreamed of Bethlehem. But standing at the manger, he saw with his own eyes the message of the angel come alive. And Joseph said, Why me? I'm just a simple man of faith. Why him? With all the rulers in the world. Why him? Inside the stable view with him. Why her? She's just an ordinary girl. Now I'm not one to second guess what angels have to say. But this is such a strange way to save the world. To think of how it could have been if Jesus had come as he deserved. There would have been no Bethlehem, no lowly shepherd. At his birth But Joseph know the reason Love had to reach so far And as he held the Savior In his arms He must have thought Why me? I'm just a simple man of trade Why him? all the rulers in the world why inside this stable view with pain why she's just an ordinary girl now I'm not one to second guess what angels have to say but they such a strange way to save the world. world. Oh, 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 oh. Now I'm not one to second guess what angels have to say. But this such a strange way to save the world. world. This is such a strange way, such a strange way, such a strange way to save the This past Monday, the world watched as the great conjunction of, of Jupiter and, and Saturn, as it's called, took place. For us, we, we had a chance to see it in the, in the southwestern sky. According to the, the Royal Astronomical Society, conjunctions that are this close are highly unusual. The last time the planets were both this close and so easy to see was March 4th, 1226. The alignment has been nicknamed the Christmas Star. But according to the Royal Astronomical Society, the fact that this event is happening close to Christmas and during the, the winter solstice 
It's pure coincidence. Or is it? In the second chapter of Matthew, verses 1 and 2, it says this. When Jesus was born in the village of Bethlehem in Judea, Herod was king. And during this time, some wise men from the east came to Jerusalem and said, Where is the child born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. Now I want you to notice what the three wise men said to King Herod. We have come, not because of an astrological interest, not even because of the, the scientific phenomenon, which it, it surely is. But he says, we, we have come to worship him. And that's exactly why we've gathered here tonight. Let's sing together. chose to come and to be one of us to take on flesh and blood and to walk this side showing each and every one of us what the real God the living God really looks like Amen Amen, Amen. You know one of the greatest parts of the, the Christmas story really is uh, the part that the angels played in this story. The angels, God's messengers, have been used throughout the scriptures, from the Old Testament through the New Testament, to proclaim the word of the Lord. But it really is, in my opinion, that their, their greatest impact on mankind was their impact, the impact that they had during the Christmas story. From delivering God's plan of an immaculate conception to Mary, 
to proclaiming the birth of the Savior to the shepherds, to providing assurance to Joseph that he was going to be okay. That Mary really is carrying the Messiah. Even the part that they play in our lives, still play in our lives today. Do you ever think about that? That, that the angels still have an impact in our lives. And the scriptures are very clear about it. In, in the 13th chapter of Hebrews, in verse 1 and 2, reminds us of this. It says, continue to love each other. Don't forget to show hospitalities to believers you don't know. Because by doing this, some believers have shown hospitality to angels without even being aware of it. That's pretty remarkable, isn't it? Send an angel with a message for Mary Straight from the Father's heart You're highly favored and the Lord is with you He has set you apart Mary was struck by the message He gave her How an ordinary girl Chosen a virgin to carry the Savior, bring him into this world. What's an angel to do? What's an angel to say? What's an angel to bring on this Christmas day? It's a message of love, a message of peace, a message of hope. That will bring their joy forevermore. Oh, oh. The shepherds were busy outside of the city, watching their flocks by night. God sent an angel to tell them a Savior would be born to them that night. A heavenly host sang all around them as they left to see the sight. When they found the baby wrapped in a manger, they knew that the angel was right. What's an angel to do? What's an angel to say? What's an angel to bring on this Christmas day? It's a message of love, a message of peace, a message of hope that will bring them joy forevermore. And every December I hope you remember the part that the angels play The message God gave them to share with the world Is the message we share today I can almost hear them say What's an angel to do? What's an angel to say? What's an angel to bring on this Christmas day? It's a message of love, a message of peace, a message of hope that will bring us joy. What's an angel to do? What's an angel to say? What's an angel to bring on this Christmas day? It's a message of love. Message of peace, message of hope that will bring us joy forever.
about the, the great conjunction. I just started uh, thinking about that as I was putting together the message for this evening. And I wanted to share with you what I believe is a, the biblical version of the greatest conjunction. You know, the word conjunction means joining two things together, coming very close with each other like Jupiter and, and Saturn. But... For us as believers, uh, the greatest biblical conjunction was the birth of Jesus. Because it was God's greatest expression of love toward us. He is the, the total embodiment of God's love. In the book of John, in chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus said this. He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And so again, for us as believers, I believe that the greatest con conjunction is formed from the word light and the word love. If you take L-I from the word light and you join it together with V-E from the word love, I believe that that's God's message to us and the greatest conjunction for us as believers because it spells the word live. We are to live in God's love. As I thought about it this week, there, there are several, several benefits for us as believers living in, in God's love. And tonight, it's not an exhaustive list. I'm not going to keep you here long. Because there are many, many, many examples throughout the the Bible that calls us as believers to live in God's love. And so tonight I just want to share three of them, if I could. The first one is because Jesus came to be one of us because of his birth, we can know that we are fully loved. We're not just love. It's not, I love you, man. It's not one of those loves. No, it, we are fully loved. Completely loved. You know, God's love for us has a, a beautiful word. It's called agape. It's agape love. It's, it's the love that is unconditional love. That is his character. That is who he is to the world. And Jesus made that abundantly clear throughout his life on this earth. That God loves you, each one of us, fully. Jeremiah 31.3, God says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. How long is everlasting? It's a long time, isn't it? Yes, pretty much. It lasts forever. It's not a, a conditional love. Well, if you do this, well, you shouldn't have done that. Boy, if you hadn't have done that, I'd watch you. But no. <laughs> You're out. You're out. Back of the bus. It's agape love. Deuteronomy 33, 27 says, The eternal God is your refuge. 
and his everlasting arms are under you. That's pretty strong for us as believers, isn't it? I, I fall a lot. I, I make mistakes every day. And it's, it's good to know that underneath us when we fall are the everlasting arms of God. John 3.16. You should know this one by heart. For God so loved the world. That He gave His only Son that whoever believes in Him, in Jesus, should not perish but have eternal life. Well, here's the rub. From time to time, we all see areas in our lives that we struggle with. Areas that we wish could be different. Amen? Or oh my? Amen. <laughs> Probably both. <laughs> You know, it might be moral failures, it might be habits that we struggle with, and things that have just discouraged us along the way. And, and how does God want us to approach those areas in our lives? I mean, is, is there a way to find freedom and real change? And I think God's answer would be yes. It's God's grace. One of the best definitions I've heard is by author Joseph Cook who wrote, Grace is nothing more nor less than the face that love wears when it meets imperfection, weakness, failure, and sin. It's that quality in the heart of God that causes Him not to deal with us according to our sins or to retaliate against us according to our iniquities. It is God's faithfulness to us even when we are not faithful. In fact, it is what love must always be when it meets the unlovely, when it meets the weak, when it meets the inadequate, the undeserving, and the despicable. You see, God is willing to respond to need with, without reference to merit. It is literally what the Bible describes as unmerited favor. God's grace pours out love. He pours out kindness and favor to all who will trust Him. You don't have to earn it. If we try to hide the unacceptable portions of our personality, the reality is, is that we can lose touch with our, our real selves, our inner person. And we, more importantly, we lose touch with God. And we have to remember that the Bible tells us His ways are not our ways. He, he doesn't accept our good part and reject our bad part. He sees us as a whole person. He doesn't see us as a split personality. No. And what he says to us, he says, give me your good part and your bad part. And let me make you whole. That's how we experience God's grace. The, the, the second part of it, that because of Jesus' birth, we have confidence that we are fully known. We are fully loved and we are fully known. And sometimes I think that maybe this is an aspect of our relationship with Christ that has slipped from our awareness. How easily we can slip into presenting ourselves carefully to Christ as if He doesn't know all the real nitty-gritty reality of our, our inner lives. How easily we can pray, well, today, wearing a mask. A different kind of mask. How easily we forget that Je Jesus really knows us and He fully 
loves us. We are totally vulnerable before Him. And whether we know it or not, whether we accept it or realize it or not, He knows us. And we are fully known and yet fully loved. That's amazing to me. Because sometimes I don't like who I see in the mirror. I don't like the thoughts I have and the actions I take and the words I say and the feelings I have at Walmart and in the gas station. <laughs> I don't. But here, here's some really good news for you because Hebrews chapter 4 verses 13 through 16 says this. Nothing is hidden from God. He sees through everything. And we will have to tell Him the truth. Because we, we have a great high priest who has gone into heaven and He is Jesus the Son of God. And that is why we must hold on to what we have said about Him. Jesus understands every weakness of ours. Because He was tempted in every way that we are. But He did not sin. So, whenever we are in need... We should come bravely before the throne of our merciful God. There, we will be treated with undeserved kindness. And we will find help. Is that good news to you tonight? And I hope so. That understanding of some people that God's up there with a lightning bolt ready to strike you every time you make a mistake and... Uh, that you're in or you're out, and man, well, if you hadn't have done that, you were right on the edge, and then you went and had to go do that. But are you nuts? <laughs> Aren't you glad God doesn't see us that way? Yeah. That His grace and His love and His mercy abounds. We, the Bible says where, 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 where sin abounds, grace goes even deeper. We are fully known because of God's greatest gift of love. Jesus. Ephesians 2, 4 and 5 says, But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive Together with Christ. First John 3 1 says, See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. That is our reality. That we are His children. Not because of what we've done, but because that of the love that the Father has given to us. Because of our personal relationship with His Son, Jesus. We have all the confidence in the world that we are fully loved, that we are fully known. The third aspect, that because of, of Jesus' birth. Because of Jesus' birth, we can have assurance that we know God. John told the, the believers, he said, I'm writing this to you that you may believe. That you may believe. That you, you can truly know God. John 17, 3 and 8. Jesus was praying what the Bible calls the priestly prayer. He was facing his time. 
His time was, had not yet come, but he was getting close to the time where he would, would hang on a cross. This baby born tonight with the little hands of a, a child that breathed that little baby breath, those little feet that you just love to smell and chew on. And... You moms know what I'm talking about. That baby. That baby would grow up to have those hands pierced with nails and tied to a cross, beaten beyond recognition, and those little feet nailed to a cross for you. This baby, this child, and he had come to this place where he was just praying to the Father and speaking to Him in, in John chapter 17. And He says to the Father, He says, And this is eternal life. That they know You. The only true God and Jesus Christ whom You have sent. And Jesus said, I glorified You on earth having accomplished the work that You gave Me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. He said, I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they are. And you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given, is given me is from you. For I have given them the words that you gave me. And they have received them and have come to know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you have sent me. That was the hardest part for me as an agnostic. As someone truly troubled in, in spirit and mind and body. I never could just wrap my head around this story of this little baby who would come and grow to be a man and give his life and sacrifice himself willingly for the joy of the cross, the Bible says. That he would do that willingly because I knew in my self-centeredness and my ego-driven personality, I knew I wouldn't do that. And there's a few people I might take a bullet for, but not a lot. And I, when I finally got my head wrapped around the fact that he did it for me, you, you stubborn, agnostic, hard-hearted, you won't believe. He did it for you. Even if you had been the only person, the only knucklehead on the earth, He still would have come and, and He would have died for you. Wow, it's a, it's a strange way to, to save the world. And so I, I want to ask you tonight, does, does your heart Understand tonight that the, the greatest treasure is the knowledge of God in the face of Jesus Christ. He is your hope. He is your peace. He is your joy. Because of Christ... The knowledge of God always involves one central idea. If God knows each one of us, who we really are, when I'm talking about when the lights are out and there's nobody in the room but you, 
And you look in that mirror and you start seeing things and realizing things and thinking things about who you really are. God says, I love you. If God knows each one of us in His love, if He gives each of us the heart, the desire to know Him, the Bible says that is eternal life. That is, that is the most precious thing any of us could ever know. Amen? Amen. And so, my, my final question for you tonight, and in just a moment I'm going to invite Bobby and Dawn, and we're going to, we're going to share in what we call an open communion. I, I know we have people from many different faiths, many different denominations, and that's okay. What, what we do is we have an open communion. And I want to give you a challenge tonight. And I want you to think about it. And then as we, as, as Bobby and Dawn lead us so graciously as they always do, I want you to think about that and then I want you to come and join us as, as, as fellow believers in taking the Lord's Supper. And so my question my final question for you is this. Who is Jesus to you? Is he someone that you just remember at, at Christmas time, you know? Remember the movie Talladega Nights and Ricky Bobby? I, I like the little baby Jesus, you know. I like to think of him like that. So maybe you just see him as the little baby Jesus. <laughs> But who, who do you see him as, really? Do you, do you just see him as somebody you remember just at Christmas time? Or, you know, maybe Easter, you, you go to a worship service somewhere, or, you know, you, you, you get involved with some type of service. Or, or is he someone that you have a personal relationship, someone that, that you could talk to like a brother? Someone who knows everything about you, all your faults, all your iniquities, all your mistakes. And he says, I love you. Come, let's, let's talk about it. I'll, I'll make those things white as snow in your life. Is he important enough in your life to, to share him with others? So those three things. Who, who is He really to you? Someone you just celebrate? Is He someone that you have a true relationship with that you can talk to about anything? And is He important enough in your life to share Him with the other people around you? I want you to think about that. As Bobby and Dawn come to set us up for communion, and then He's going to invite you up and we're going to share the Lord's Supper tonight and celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 We need some light. I think we're good. There be light. Amen. There was light. I was just sitting there thinking this is the only time of year where we uh, celebrate the full circle of Jesus. <clears throat> Tomorrow we celebrate his birth. Tonight we celebrate his death and resurrection. Full circle. Beginning to end. Round and round. 
And that same night that he was betrayed, he had his last supper with his disciples and he took bread. And it's very simply, he just broke it and he said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and he said, I want all of you to drink from this. This is my blood of a new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this. Remember me. Come. Circle around this way and make it back to your seat.
It's a very a special time. We, we always have communion. Uh, we, we try to have it uh, each quarter. And uh, it's kind of special when we uh, are able to get together. And, uh, during Thanksgiving season into the Christmas season, we get to, to double up and, and share communion with, uh, with you guys. And uh, it's just always so special. Bobby and, and Dawn just uh, go out of their way. Dawn makes, actually makes the bread that we serve. And uh, it's always such a, a special time. It's just a special time of reflection, being able to just, like I said, talk to the, to the Lord like He's your brother, like He knows everything about you, and, and to be able to, to, to allow Him to bring that, that healing, to begin that healing that we all need, uh, to be able to walk closer with Him. We wanted to uh, close the night out with uh, a candlelight part of the service um, I have here we're going to just what we're going to do and I'd like to Jan if you will just uh, I'm going to start with you and then if we'll light the candles and just go uh, from row to row and is that one going to stay lit silent children said? Amen. Amen. God bless y'all. Thank you for coming. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go 
chilling on the mountain at Jesus Christ born. While shepherds kept their watching for silent flocks by night. Behold, throughout the heavens there shone a heavenly light. Go chilling on the mountain over the hills and everywhere. Go chilling on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Go chilling on the mountain over the hills and everywhere. Go chilling on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. That Jesus Christ is born. Your grandson burnt my hair. How bad was it? Uh oh. <laughs> the fried hair. You hear that smell? Ooh, that smell. Yes, he is. He, we have a red house, and so he, he can see our house. Even if it snows, he'll see it. Yeah, even if it snows. Yeah, it's usually pretty dark in the morning. We'll have to probably sleep till daylight. Can you do that? You could? Oh, boy. Give me five. Give me five. All right. Hey, Trace, you were awesome on camera up there. You were. You were awesome. I think you could be a movie star now. Whoa. Are we all clear? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Um, okay. oh, hello, goodbye.